Hello friends. Today I want to show you how the new column masking feature works in Tahoma 2D, showing you two very useful ways to use it. And I'm sure the second way will change how you animate, so do stay tuned for that. So using the masking feature is really straightforward, so let's just jump straight in and look how to create and use the masks. So you create a mask in a vector level, so let's create one of those and rename the column so we don't lose track of which is which. And hopefully in the future, you'll be able to use raster and smart raster levels for masks. But for now, this is only available on vector levels. So let me draw a simple mask and I'll use the geometry tools and I'll create a circle. I use the standard first palette entry for the outline. Let me just draw that quite large and then add a new palette entry with the color to fill this in. And the first thing to note is that the mask is only the fill part of this shape. So the black outline, however thick it is, will not be used as the mask, but you'll see that in a second. So as I say, you can only use vector levels for the mask, but you can use any of the three drawing levels to place over the mask to actually present your animation. Let me show you each type. So first I'll add a standard raster level and I'll add a smart raster level and another vector level. And in each of these, I'll overlap a shape so you can see how that's affected by the mask. Let me just space these out so you can see them on separate frames. So in frame number one, we've got the standard raster level. Frame number two, We've got the Toons raster level in green there. Frame number three, we've got the vector level all overlaid over the mask column. So let's turn this column into an actual mask. And you do so from the drop down here to the left hand side of the column header. And you just tick the box labeled clipping mask. And immediately you see something change. And basically that has now enabled this column to be a mask for anything that is shown in front of it. The actual mask isn't visible. If you do want the mask to be visible as well, then tick the box labeled render mask and you'll see the mask as well. And with these settings, currently everything that's shown in front of the mask will be displayed in the output. But if you tick the box labeled invert mask, then everything outside of the mask will be shown in the output. And again, if I untick the render mask option, you'll see the mask disappear and only the drawings in the other columns is shown. So then if we go to frame two, you'll see that all of that drawing is currently shown. If you want this drawing to be masked out with the same mask, then you need to move it into the column directly above the mask. And now you can see that that circle is cut off from the mask. And again, if we change the mask to be inverted or not inverted, you can see the two different versions of that drawing that you can get. Likewise, drawing number three, the vector level, let's bring that down into that same column. And now you can see the vector level also cut off from that mask. So if you look at all three frames there, you can see all three drawing level types are masked out with that mask. And that's the basics of using a mask. But remember that you can paint in any style over a mask to get the effect that you need. For instance, with vector levels, you can use the different vector brushes or the vector fills here in the palette list, or even the My Paint brushes shown in the raster tab for use on standard raster and smart raster levels. Let me show you a typical example of where you might use one of these. So before going any further, let me show you as I was discussing earlier about the fill on the vector level being used as the mask and not the line. So let me render the mask, turn off the invert so it shows the drawing inside the mask there. And don't worry about these extra lines on the outside, the extra few pixels. When you actually render the output, they won't be seen. So if I use the selection tool and select the mask there, and then change the thickness of the outline and make it slightly thicker by using the pump tool here, you'll see that where the red rectangle is drawn over this mask, it's only drawn up to the center point of that line for the mask. So however thick you make the line, the mask will only drawn up to that center point. And to keep this simple, one thing you can do is to hide the line altogether by either changing the thickness to zero 
or choosing the palette entry and bringing down the alpha to be zero alpha. So the line won't be drawn on screen visually and it makes it easy to see where the fill for the mask is. And at any point, you can always bring up the alpha again to see that outline if it makes it easier for you to work with adjusting that mask. So that's the basics of using the mask, but remember that you can paint in any style over a mask to get the effect that you need. For instance, if you're painting in a vector level, you can use the vector brushes or vector fills shown in the vector tab here. Or if you're using a standard raster level or smart raster level, then you can use any of the my paint brushes shown in the raster tab. So a typical example is you might want to use the airbrush to add some texture or to add the shadows and highlights to your character or to part of your drawing. So if I add a new standard raster level, move that into the column above the mask and remove some of these empty columns. And then add a palette entry, choose the airbrush from the my paint list. Let's pick a, a colour for the airbrush. Let's just choose white initially. Choose the brush tool. If we move the cursor into the screen, you can see how large or small the tool is. So we can adjust the size to match the effect we're trying to achieve. And then if we paint over that shape, you'll see the paint is only shown where the mask is visible. And you can't see that so much with the white. So let's change to a dark colour here and paint a little bit of shadow on the opposite side of this shape. And by doing that, you can see how easy it is to add shadows and highlights to your drawings. And again, if we adjust the mask properties, we can choose to not render the mask. So then you can see where you've painted, but only in the shape of the mask. Or if I invert the mask, then only the paint on the outside of the shape is shown whether the mask is visible or not. So that's how you can draw and paint using a mask. But the second way of using a mask is really where you're likely to find the real benefit. But before that, I just want to mention that this video was made exclusively for my Patreon members. So they'll be able to see this first and then I'll share it out to help other users with using Tahoma 2D. And this video is part of a series of videos covering some of the new features that are in Tahoma 2D, but not OpenTunes. So do check out my Patreon for more details about the other videos. Plus, you can download this to Homa 2D project to see exactly how I put this together. So the second way that you're likely to use masking is to replace the effects, specifically the matte in and matte out effects that help you show one column's drawings over another's. Let me give you a quick example. So for instance, if you've got a complex background and you want your character to walk in front of part of the background and behind another part, you could break up the background into different columns. Or you could initially draw it in different columns. But if you don't want to do that, or if you can't do that, for instance here, I'm using a photograph, so it makes it trickier to break it up. You can use the column masking to help your character walk behind part of the background and in front of the rest. So let me bring in a character and I'll bring in this Mickey Mouse drawing that I made for an animation that I replicated the famous scene from Steamboat Willie to show the full animation process in OpenTunes, which is exactly the same process that you use in Tahoma 2D. And you can find that video on my channel or linked down below. So firstly, let's scale him down to fit the scene a little better. And imagine you want this character to walk in from the right hand side behind the car, behind this sign here, and into the middle of the screen. So we'll start off at the right hand side, and now we'll simply add a, an animation key at the right hand side here, and bring him to the center of the screen. So as you play the animation, he comes across the screen there. But you can see he's shown in front of the car and in front of the sign. And this is where column masking helps. So simply mask out the car, and the sign area. So remember, it's the fill area of the vector level of a mask that is used for the mask, so you can't just use the brush tool, so we need a filled area. One of the best ways to block out these kinds of shapes is to use the polyline option of the geometry tool. So let me 
hide the Mickey character for now so I can better see what I'm masking out. Let's add a vector level. And again, I'll call this column mask and bring the column behind the Mickey column so it masks out the entire Mickey drawing. And then we'll zoom in and then start using this tool. But first, let's change the size of the building because it doesn't quite reach the end of the screen here. So let's change the position and just bring it to the right a little. Okay, so for the mask, we use the geometry tool in the polyline mode and then click once for each point on the polyline and just tap around the shape, building the rough shape that you want masking. And then when you're finished, click inside the circle and it will close that shape. And then we'll fill that shape in again with another palette entry color, just to recognize the difference between the line and the fill like that. And then we can remove the line by dropping down the alpha. And then if you use the control point editor, you can click on any of the points and adjust them to better fit your drawing. And if you need any curves, you can right click on a point and choose to set a non-linear control point, which gives us these handles and lets us change the lines into curves to better match the drawing that we're mapping out here. So let's change this one as well. Non-linear and then drag the handle out like that. And then again, back to the geometry tool, let's draw around the post here, bringing up the alpha for the line so we can easily see the black outline. And then just click at each point on the shape to draw the mask around it. And take your time to be as accurate as you like. I'm going a little quicker here to make it easier for you to see the principle. And again, we just change the column to be a clipping mask. Let's show the Mickey character as he walks in. And you'll see now that the Mickey character is shown over the areas where I've added the mask. So all we need to do is invert the mask and now he'll be shown outside of those areas where the mask is. So he'll appear to walk behind the car and the sign. That's how you can make him walk behind the sign and the car to appear on screen. But if you wanted to do the opposite, you just change the mask to be not inverted and it will show where the mask has been drawn. I'll give you one more quick example of that. Let's create another vector level for another mask. Put this onto frame one. Using the geometry tool, I will draw a filled area where the window is. Let's fill it in there, bring down the alpha for the line. And then I'll insert a new column and I'll copy the drawing for Mickey by selecting on the drawing in the timeline, pressing control C and then control V to paste him in his new column. And then using the animate tool, I'll resize him to suit and move him into the window area. So there's the right size there. Let's move the animation key over a number of frames so it doesn't move on frame one. And then a few frames later, we'll move him up into the window there. Then all we need to do is to turn on the clipping mask for the mask below. And with the render mask option turned off, you won't see that blue rectangle. You'll just see Mickey in the area of the window where we've painted that mask. So if I just play that on ping pong play, you'll see one Mickey walking behind the car and sign into the scene, and the other one appearing in the window. So that's one mask showing where Mickey can be, that's in the window, and one mask showing where he can't be, which is where the car and sign are. So that's color masking into Homer 2D. And remember that for now, you can only create a color mask using vector levels as the mask, 
but at some point in the future, the other two level types will be able to be used as a mask, and when they are, that will be an absolute game changer. I can't wait to see that. But until then, try out column masking and see how it'll change the way you animate. So drop a comment down below to let me know how you'll be using this new column masking feature. So stay tuned to Patreon to see my next Tahoma 2D feature tip. And that's a guarantee.